Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about spring crappie fishing. Now we've been following this bite this spring and there's been a lot of back and forth with the weather as far as moving fish up and down. But right now in certain parts of the Midwest, the fish are all the way up doing their deal. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. In this video, we're going to be sitting down with Nick Sakella and he's going to be breaking down a bunch of tips that you can use right now to catch crappies. But first things first is understanding location and the seasonal progression of these fish because you can't catch them if you're not casting where they live. As soon as the uh, the ice comes off the lakes, the crappies are still kind of bunched up out in there, out in the basin because the reason, you know, there's a lot of bug hatches going on out there in that late winter, early spring, and the fish are out there just eating. You know, as the water temp warms up, those fish start moving into the shallows, following bait, and getting ready to spawn. I mean, so they move from the basin, you know, 30, 35 foot stuff, and then you, the first place you target these fish are on those weed edges, 12 to 15 feet. Once that water temp gets above 45, start looking in that shallow water. Springtime, you know, is an awesome time to start looking and researching, find a new lake so you can target crappies on just because they are so predictable on the areas they're gonna be in. And typically they're biting pretty well. So you get a pretty good idea on what a lake has in it for size of fish, quality of fish, and numbers, you know, pretty quickly. Um, spots that I like to look right away if I'm looking on a map is do these lakes have little channels going into other lakes? Do they have little back bays that are small that might be warming up faster? Dark water back bays are gonna be the best for warming up fast, but anything that's small, skinnier water, big, you know, weed flats that are gonna hold the heat from the sunlight and stuff right away early spring are, you know, key spots you wanna check on the map. Now, honestly, this time of year, one of the toughest parts about this bite is locating the fish, and in my opinion, the best way to do that is to just do a lot of experimenting. So Nick just laid out a bunch of good tips, kind of helping you know where to look. But once you get to those areas, in my experience, you got to just start casting and you got to check your electronics. You might see them on your electronics, but if not, it's worth throwing out some casts just to see if there's any signs of activity. And uh, especially once the fish start to move up shallower, it can be a little bit tougher to find them on your electronics anyway. But location is the first part of this equation. The second part of this equation is presentation. And there's a bunch of different ways to catch spring crappies this time of year. And you know, a lot of folks like to cast and wine, you know, moving baits, hard baits, spinner baits, all those things. But one of the absolute most consistent ways to catch them is with a simple bobber setup. Here's how Nick likes to rig his up. So I'm gonna go over a little bit about what we're actually using to catch these fish. Um, down on the bottom here, you know, we're just using a little white bloodworm has been the ticket today. Up from there, you know, 16, 18 inches, a little split shot, slip bobber, and then your depth stop wherever you're, you know, you're gonna set for whatever depth of water you're fishing in. Uh, when it comes to the rod, I, I don't really like going much smaller than 6'6", uh, six, six, uh, seven foot's about perfect I found just because I'm able to really cast that light setup far away to, you know, if I have a spooky f school of fish or if I'm just fan casting around a big flat trying to find fish, I can really cast it far out there. Uh, four pound test, it's going to be able to be big enough to get in a, if you know, get a bass or a predator fish on the line as well. Now you probably noticed that Nick was actually dangling a little tiny piece of plastic underneath his bobber and while you know, using small crappie minnows can be really popular this time of year. And for good reason, you know, anytime you're using live bait, it definitely works. But sometimes those plastics can be a little bit more efficient for a number of different reasons, which I'll let Nick lay out right now. When I'm up on these big vast flats, you know, cabbage flats, stuff like that, where these fish are sitting, and I'm out here casting around, fan casting, trying to find these fish. The reason I love using plastics is because you're not worried about a minnow going flying and you're able to really throw that bait way out there and work it back. Another thing I love to do when the water's real calm is just slowly reeling that float in, stop it once in a while, that bait's gonna pendulum down once it stops and start moving again. It's a great triggering effect when there's no wind or waves pushing that bobber, putting action on that bait. It's one critical thing that uh, I see people not do um, when you're used to using a minnow. The minnow's doing all the work when you have a plastic on. Once in a while you gotta help that plastic look a little more lifelike. That's a great tip for you guys on that. Now on the topic of plastics, 
Here's Nick's three go-to plastics for springtime crappies. So I'm gonna go through a few of the different profiles that Northlands came out with for their plastics that work great for this time of year under a float for crappie fishing. We'll start out with the blood worm. The blood worm is your tried and true um, bug and minnow kind of shape to it. Doesn't take much to move that tail. On to the next, we got like a, it's a little minnow style bait that they've came out with, a fork tail on the end. I really like using this bait when I'm moving the, the bobber a lot and putting a little bit more action on it. And lastly is the, the skeleton minnow. This thing here is, uh, it doesn't take almost any action to get that tail moving and it's really enticing for hungry crappies. Now last up, Nick is going to talk about a mistake that he sees anglers make in this springtime crappie deal. But in my opinion, I think this is a mistake that anglers make all season long, specifically when they're chasing panfish and using small jigs. You know, this is a really common problem, especially when you're ice fishing, but I'll let Nick talk about that right now. One of the biggest mistakes I see a lot of people make is just not presenting that plastic in the right way. When you tie on the bait, a lot of times it's gonna hang a little bit at an angle. What I like to do is just always slide that knot back forward so that bait is hanging horizontal. After every fish catch, I'm always coming up here, pulling that bait back to horizontal, and it just makes a huge difference under that float on how the fish see it, react to it, and how you catch them. Now I know most of you are probably starting to think about walleye fishing right now, you know, with different seasons opening up throughout the region, but this is still a great time to go out and chase crappies. It's a lot of fun, you can take out the kids, catch a bunch of fish, you can use bobbers, you can cast, there are a number of different things you can do, but hopefully you were able to pick up a couple tips that'll help you put a few more fish in the net this season. And if you did in fact learn something, hit that little red subscribe button down below and stay tuned because we have a bunch more awesome videos to come this season.